an NTTV special report, UNT Prez Talks with Dr. Neil Samatrisk. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of UNT Prez Talks, where we sit down with UNT President Neil Samatresk. I'm Michaela Goose, and let's go ahead and get started. How are you doing today, President Samatresk? I'm doing great. It's the first day of classes for summer, too, and we're actually having 13 class sections meet this summer. Well, that is such a big improvement from everything online last semester. Uh, Let's just go ahead and get straight into the point. There has been recently a call for UNT to lower tuition for students only attending online classes during the fall semester, as they will not be using facilities such as the Pole Rec Center and the on-campus doctor's office. What has been UNT's response? Well, first of all, the majority of students will be able to be on campus. Over 50% of our classes are going to be held in person, provided at least you know that we don't have any further Uh, acceleration of the pandemic based off where we are now. We're using social distancing and masks uh, and those students will have access to services. So whether you're online, remote or in person, you'll be able to come to school. You'll be able to get support from advising, from career counseling. You'll be able to use the student union. You'll be able to access dining services. You'll be able to go to the uh, recreation center. So at this point, uh, students who will be remote or or students who will be uh, in person are going to be paying the same fees that we pay through the year. We even anticipate athletics events. So I think it's gonna be more normal than people think. And there's no reason not to have those fees because we're still providing those services. Interestingly, telecounseling and telehealth are actually working really, really well and are still services that we have to pay doctors and nurses for. So it doesn't make sense that we cut Uh, the availability of those. So at this point, uh, we don't anticipate any changes. Now let's point out one thing. Students who are fully online, that is taking genuine online classes, uh, do not pay the same fees. They pay an online fee, which is different. So that's the only exception. So students who are fully online will be paying a different tuition rate than students who are choosing to take classes in person. Yes. And will there be more financial aid opportunities given to students for the upcoming fall semester like they were at the end of the spring semester? Yeah, we continue to have two different pots of money. One's the UNT CARES pot, which I contribute heavily to, and uh, that's to support students who fall through the safety net. For example, international students, DACA students, we're trying to make sure that there's some small measure of financial support for them. The other is the CARES Act money. We've reserved about $4 million, maybe four and a half, I'm not quite clear, uh, uh, out of that for continued emergency grant and aid support for anyone who's registered for fall. As far as, uh, we also have a little bit of money in another pot that we're going to try to help students who still have some unpaid balances with, but uh, really that money won't go very far, but every little bit helps. So far we've distributed over $10 million in emergency grants and aid. That's amazing, and you're 100% correct. Every little bit helps. How can students access these grants and aid? Uh, They go to tinyurl.unt.edu, which is the one-stop shop uh, area for all financial aid, or they can go to, uh, oh my goodness, I'm forgetting it, uh, the financial uh, student accounting website uh, and find links there, or they can find links to our uh, COVID updates. So there's a number of places they can find the links, but you fill up, fill out the form, send it in. Uh, not everybody gets funded fully, not because there's requests. The requests greatly exceed the amount of money we have available, but uh, we try to make sure that everybody who has need gets something given to them. Right now, for summer, we're pretty much spent down, though. Let's. I, I want to. Know, you know, we've distributed a lot of aid. We pushed it out very quickly, uh, and now we're holding for the fall semester because we know a lot of students are gonna still need to help have help paying rent and getting food and all the good stuff. By the way, I wanna point out the food pantry is reopening and uh, I also like supporting the food pantry. So for students who have some food insecurity issues right now, please do come to the student union and access our food pantry. Thank you so much for letting us know. I'm sure that helps so many students across the UNT community. What are some things that the university has learned about the massive online teaching from the spring and summer experience that has influenced the way that UNT is approaching the fall semester? 
Well, one thing we know is that when everyone re went remote in two weeks, while we managed, it wasn't always as smooth or as professional as it could be. This past summer, we've had, oh gosh, I don't know, almost every single faculty member uh, has taken some type of an upgrade course or a, a bridge training or a course through our uh, CLEAR organization, which is the one that does our online and remote work, to learn how to improve how they use Canvas and to learn how to improve delivering remote uh, education and online education. We've had about 700 faculty members, maybe 800 by now, I haven't kept up on the latest number, uh, take extensive training so that they can do a better job with their online and remote delivery. Uh, the faculty who are taking it are saying, wow, I really like this, it's working well, I know I can make a better course now. So I think that you'll see a general improvement in the quality of almost all of our online and remote uh, classes and I think faculty members are going to be finding yet more creative ways as opposed to just jamming what they did into the rest of the semester. I think you're gonna see some really interesting and unique experiments in how to make uh, engaging remote education. And once again, just to go back to the first question, it is going to be possible for any UNT student who is not ready to fully come back into on-campus, in-person, face-to-face meetings, they will still be able to take online classes so that teachers can use these courses in action. Yeah, there's some confusion around this topic. And, and I have to admit that I don't, we haven't worked out the final schedule. It'll be available July 10th, by the way, for fall, uh, because the logistics of organizing socially distanced face-to-face -face classes are pretty daunting. Having said that, uh, it's our plan to make an accommodation for any student who is unable uh, because of health reasons or because they're immunocompromised uh, to take an online, uh, excuse me, any student who really feels uncomfortable with face-to-face -face ought to be able to have a remote option or uh, an online option. However, we have learned that there are some areas where we can't change things. For example, student teaching. Um, I don't know how we do student teaching right now, but there's, you know, it's a requirement to get your teaching license here in the state. Uh, certain types of majors require uh, very specific types of face-to-face -face experiences. So for those students, we're going to have to have individual conversations to feel, find out if there's an accommodation or if that, if by not doing that, it so weakens their opportunities to gain entry to the job market or for licensing or permitting or whatever uh, certificates that they, uh, that they really have to take face to face. If that's the case, we'll try to render additional um, safety uh, guarantees for that student but to the best of our ability. The part of the problem here, Michaela, and this is the saddest part of this pandemic is no one asked for this and it creates certain real challenges that could cause interruptions in people's education. We hate to see that, we're trying to work around it, but I mean, if let's say you're a grad student and you depend on doing research in your laboratory, uh, you can't finish your thesis or your dissertation without it. Uh, so there's no real substitute sitting home, taking something remote or online for actually accomplishing that research mission that you have. So those are gonna be the really hard cases where someone might have to delay their education until there's a vaccine. And I hate to say it, but uh, the way this pandemic's coming down is certainly going to be a disruption. It's already been a major disruption in our lives and it's going to be a greater disruption for some people who I think are going to be challenged to try to do what they do, whether it's working their job or completing their education. Uh, so, we all just have to try to be empathetic and work together to make the experiences the best we can for those folks and to accommodate them at a later date if that's what we need to do. And you're 100% right on that. This is a terrifying and disruptive time, but all we can do right now, especially as you want to community, is come together and help each other out. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for joining us, President Samatresk. And thank you for watching UNT Prez Talks. You've been watching an NTTV special report, UNT Prez Talks with Dr. Neil Smotrisk.